Welcome and thank you for joining me at our online worship service today. It is Sunday. It is the day the Lord has wonderfully made. It is a time to gather around His Word and reflect on His vision for our lives. And therefore, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will meet and move each one of us today. In Psalm 84 verse 10, we read the following. One day spent in your temple is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather stand at the gate of the house of my God than live in the homes of the wicked. May God's presence during today's gathering help us to see Him clearer in all aspects of our lives. And therefore it's my privilege to greet you in the wonderful name of God Almighty, His Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us start this service by bringing glory to God. Feel free to sing the following worship song with us. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise, sing praise. And forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. Forever God is faithful. mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that has been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Sing praise. love endures forever his love endures forever his love endures forever his love endures forever sing praise oh sing praise sing praise sing praise God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. Let us pray. O Lord our God, we gather together today to give you thanks and praise your greatness. We praise your mighty works to the whole world. We praise you for your wonderful deeds. Your power is limitless. Your wisdom is unparalleled. Your grace is overwhelming and your love is never failing. 
Touch our hearts when we open your word today. Enrich us and transform us and send us back into the world to be your bearers of love and hope there where it is urgently needed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, our scripture reading comes from Luke chapter 11, and we will be reflecting on verse 1 to 13 and the very famous Lord's Prayer. Our theme for today is the Dare Prayer. Let us read together. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me, the door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of your fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now that concludes today's reading. May the Lord bless his word in our hearts today. Now, during Jesus' ministry, there were quite a few people who dared to ask him questions, sometimes with the intention to try and outwit him by being clever. But never ask Jesus a question if you don't truly want the answer. Because Jesus had the ability to either return your question with another question, or to tell you a tricky story, or he sometimes turns the tables on you, since he already knows what you're secretly asking. Ask him what he means by neighbor and you'll get a lesson in the kind of active compassion you're not enacting in your own life. Ask him if you should pay your taxes and you'll get an entire theology lesson in one sentence about your own bad priorities. Ask him how many times you should forgive your neighbor for allowing the dog to do his business on your lawn. And you'll be challenged with your own inability to forgive even once for real. For every smart remark, you'll have just the right reply. And it will always be about you. What you need to learn or what you need is to assume you already had. You see, so it's no surprise that in today's scripture, when Jesus' disciples ask him to teach them how to pray, that he'll give them what I like to call the dare prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer, and some call it the Disciples' Prayer, since it's all about what a good disciple prays for. But the dare prayer, I think, is most appropriate, because that's exactly what it is. A challenge about what kind of prayer you're willing to pray. Now, we know the disciples knew how to pray, Certain prayers were required daily to be recited by a good, honest Jew. Every disciple would certainly have known all of those by heart. The traditional Jewish prayers for Sabbath, the prayers for Passover, the prayers for the blessing of the home and family, even the prayers for other high holy days. So the Jewish people had a prayer for every occasion. They already knew how to pray according to the law. But that's not the kind of prayer that they were asking for. 
They wanted to know how their teacher, their rabbi, defined prayer. What kind of personal kind of prayer would please God the most? What kind of prayer they should learn to pray in order to carry out the mission that Jesus put in front of them? What kind of prayer would no doubt benefit them most, ensure that their families would flourish and elicit the answer from God that they most wanted to hear? They knew that John the Baptist had taught his own disciples a prayer, as most rabbis were in the habit of doing. So they wanted one from Jesus too, a prayer of their own to solidify their group as disciples of the way. Their request was, teach us a prayer the way John taught his disciples a special prayer. Now their request, though about prayer, sounded a bit more like gang rivalry than reverent petition. And what Jesus taught them surprised them. And perhaps it will surprise you too. For although we say this prayer again and again, I'm not sure that we really get the impact of what Jesus was saying with the prayer he asked his disciples to pray. So let's take a journey into the original Greek and take a look at Jesus' famous prayer. When you pray, he said this, Heavenly Father of all of us, help us to keep your name holy. Let your kingdom come to us and your will be carried out here on earth just as it is in heaven. Give us each day the bread we need and forgive us our sins to the degree that we forgive everyone who is in debt to us. And don't put temptations before us, but instead deliver us from the evil. Now, this is not a long prayer, but it's a powerful prayer and one that will challenge us to the core, bring us to our knees and guide us to pray in a way that is not most likely our first inclination. Because let's face it, when we pray, we often ask God to fulfill our wishes. Kind of like God is a genie in a bottle who can grant our every whim. Or we pray in earnest, fully, expecting God to give us the answer we have already formulated in our minds that we want. But that's not the prayer that Jesus gives us. So let's look at it for a moment, line by line. It starts with, Heavenly Father of all of us. You see, with this opening, Jesus not only places God far above and beyond any human capacity for comprehension or understanding and establishes God's unique sovereignty over us, but includes not the one who is praying, but all of us. When we pray, our prayer is not singular, it is communal. We pray for the entire world, for you, for your neighbor for your enemies, and for your community. So right off the bat, God is guiding you to pray on behalf of all of God's people, all of creation, and all that God loves. Then he says, help us to keep your name holy, to revere and honor you. So right away we know this is a prayer of humility. In our prayer, we do not place ourselves and our wishes, our needs, our wants, our petitions first, but we honor God first. Similar to the Shema, we love God with all our heart and soul and strength and mind. And this alone is hard for us to do. So we ask first for God's help to uphold this goal so that the prayer we pray will come out of this capacity and not out of our own desires. May your kingdom come to us and your will be carried out here on earth, just as it is carried out in your heavenly realm. So once again, this sentence puts our agendas on the back burner and propels God's will and desire, his way and his mission to the forefront of our minds and hearts. We ask essentially that God not abide by any wishes or wants or petitions we may put forward but that God's will ultimately be carried out. Then what now? 
How hard is that to say when you realize what you're saying, especially when you probably came to pray with your own goal and request in mind to begin with? And then he goes further. And may God's plan, his will, his mission be carried out here on earth. Just the same way as God commands the entire heavens. Now, Friends, that's a powerful statement. You are essentially saying, God, I do not ask anything for myself, but I ask you to do whatever is needed to fulfill your ultimate will on earth for all of your people. The prayer continues. Give us this day the bread we need. At last, the petition part of the prayer. But, but there's that us again. God, give to us as human beings what we need to do your will. And what will is that? Forgive us our sins as we forgive all who are in debt to us. Now, that sentence is tricky. And here's where we can truly cherish the gift of sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Because right here in this sentence, we are asking God to forgive us just the way we forgive others. If that sentence doesn't bring you down to the floor, I don't know what will. Who wants to be treated by God the way we've treated others in our lives? And thereby I mean all others. Somehow I don't think we do. To ask that is the ultimate confession of unworthiness. You see, we don't receive Jesus' gift of salvation because we are such good people and earned it. We don't receive Jesus' gift of redemption because God's will automatically gives us a free pass. We don't receive Jesus' gift of mercy because we've done everything right or should expect or demand it. Jesus' disciples asked, Lord, teach us to pray. But Jesus taught them so much more. He revealed his Father's heart and his will for our lives. He revealed that God is like a loving Father. You can trust God's will for you. You can expect good things from God. So come to God with shameless audacity. Jesus set the perfect example of how important it is to regularly pray and to spend time with the Father. I think one of the reasons Jesus prayed confidently was because he saw prayer as friendship with God. Someone once described prayer simply like that, as friendship with the living God. That's a pretty good definition. You know, some years ago, I read a beautiful story about an elderly man who was quite ill. The minister came to see the dying man and then he noticed an empty chair in the opposite side of the bed. The chair was pulled up, especially close to the bed. The older man said, let me tell you about this chair. Many years ago, I found it quite difficult to pray. So one day I shared this problem with my pastor. He told me not to worry about kneeling or about placing myself in some pious position or about speaking in high sounding words. Instead, he said, just sit down, put a chair in front of you and imagine God sitting there in that chair and then just talk to him as you would talk to a friend. The older man said, I've been doing that ever since. Some days later, the daughter of the older man called the minister to tell him that her father had died peacefully. And then she said this. For some reason, his hand was on that empty chair on the other side of the bed. Isn't that strange? Oh no, it's not strange at all, the minister said. I understand perfectly. He was reaching out to his best friend. That's what prayer and essentially the Lord's Prayer is all about. It's reaching out to God and putting our trust in his hands. And that is what Jesus ultimately wanted to teach his friends. He dares us to fully commit ourselves to God the Father and to trust him with all our needs. May your prayer life be blessed this week. And may you experience how the Father reveals his heart to you when you spend precious time with him. Amen. Let us pray. 
Father, thank you for your word and the way you have revealed yourself to us today. Thank you for showing us what the most important things are in life. We easily get distracted and lose our focus. Guide us and help us to fully understand the possibilities of an intimate prayer life as you have demonstrated to us. Bless every person listening and watching today. Bless their homes and their loved ones. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, without your prayers and support, we won't be able to keep on bringing hope and joy in the lives of those who are in desperate need. Thank you so much for enabling us to keep on serving our community and to make a difference. And if you were moved by this worship service and would like to make a contribution, you are welcome to do so by following the instructions that will follow on the screen. Friends, we have come to the end of our service. Thank you so much for spending the past few minutes with me. And may you and your home be blessed. And may you experience the protection and the provision of the Lord. The love of the Lord draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fills your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.